There is a story that on the first day after the people of a village had ushered in Rosh Hashanah, the new year, the villagers were miserable. Why were they so miserable? Because the emissary of the Tsar was coming to the village and they were worried about what message he would bring. This leader was not very friendly toward the Jewish people, and they feared how the message might hurt them. So, on the first day of the new year, when the emissary arrived in town, everybody came into the village square to find out what he had to say. The emissary said, The Tsar mocks the God of the Jews. You gather in your synagogues, you pray to your God, you say that your God knows everything, that your God can see everything, that your God is all-powerful, yet your God is invisible. The Tsar doesn't believe any of that. The Tsar asks, if your God is all-powerful and can see everything, and yet your God is invisible, how can your God see God's self? The people wondered, how does God see God's self? It must be possible, right? But how could it be? Before the emissary departed, he told the people, you have one week to answer this question. If at the end of the week you cannot come up with an answer for the Tsar, then your synagogue will be closed and you will have nowhere to go on Yom Kippur. The people were so upset. They ran to their rabbi and they asked their rabbi their question. But after a long time thinking it over, the rabbi just couldn't come up with an answer. If God is all-powerful, and also invisible, how can God see God's self? The rabbi decided to go out in nature, to walk through the forest and to sit among the trees and the animals and hopefully be inspired. But even after his time meditating in nature, he still couldn't think of an answer. As he walked back to his village, he spotted one of the children from his Sunday school. The student said, Rabbi, why do you look so sad? The rabbi explained that he'd been grappling with a question all week and just couldn't come up with an answer. What's the question? The student asked. If God's all-powerful and God's invisible, how does God see God's self? The child started to giggle. That's an easy one. Oh, Rabbi, I know the answer to that question. You taught us the answer at synagogue. Don't you remember? The rabbi was astonished. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. What do you mean, he asked. Rabbi, you taught us that each person is created, but Selim Elohim in God's image. So when God wants to see God's self, all God has to do is look at one of us. We are God's mirror. The rabbi was so relieved. <sighs> he went back to the town and gathered all the people into the village square, and he shared with them the child's answer. And so, he concluded, if God wants to see God's self, all God has to do is look down upon one of us. When the emissary of the Tsar arrived, the answer was given. It satisfied them, and the people were able to go to synagogue on Yom Kippur. As they prayed, they looked around at one another, and they truly felt what it means to be made in God's image. They felt that energy coming from each person, and they felt that responsibility to cherish each individual. They thought about how they would behave in this new year, how they would show each other kindness and act righteously, 
because they now understood that whenever God wanted to see God's self, all God had to do was look down and see the holiness inside of each of them. Now, God has been seeing God's self in humanity since the beginning. Torah teaches us in Bereshit, the story of creation, that we are made B'Tselem Elohim, in God's image. Every human being is made in the image of God. Jewish tradition teaches that every human being has this holy spark of light inside of them waiting to be shared. Now imagine if we actually treated one another as holy, as though each person had this holy spark. This week in Torah, we begin the book of Leviticus, a book that deals with sacrifices and the ways that our ancestors worshipped God. Now I know we have some of our uh, bat mitzvah students here and they have certainly grappled with this tough book of Torah. So they especially know what I'm talking about as I share that this portion of Torah, it gets into all the details about the animals and the blood and the rituals and the smoke. Details that we may not necessarily relate to today. Details that make some of us deeply uncomfortable. But when we examine this book of Torah, we realize that much of Leviticus is a quest for holiness. It's the Israelites trying their best to connect with the divine in the way that they felt God calling them to. They craved holiness. They craved it. They craved a connection to God. The book of Leviticus shares some of the ways that they clung to God during their hardest times. And for them, this was their guide to holy living. Our ancestors were chasing holiness. And yet, all the way back in Genesis, all the way back in Bereshit, in the beginning of Torah, we learn that holiness isn't far. Holiness is right there inside of every person. Jewish values teach us that every person is holy and that every person deserves to be treated with kavod, honor, and chesed, kindness. It is our responsibility to create this world every day, this world where individuals are treated as holy. Now, we have tremendous work to do as we understand that in our world today, not all individuals are being treated as holy. With holiness on our minds, we reflect on Florida legislature's passage of the Parental Rights and Education Bill, commonly referred to as the Don't Say Gay Bill. This bill bans discussion of sexual orientation and gender identity with younger students. Our legislature should protect and support the LGBTQ plus community, not discriminate against them. Our legislature should help us to create a world where we celebrate and cherish every individual's unique identity. A world where all human beings can be their authentic selves without being treated as unmentionable or forced to hide who they are inside. One of the ways that we may encourage our legislature to protect and support the LGBTQ plus community is to look for guidance from the groups and organizations who already make this their mission, who have the knowledge and expertise to speak to this. The Glisten Research Institute supports LGBTQ youth in schools and extracurricular activities. They teach the importance of advocating for inclusive and affirming curriculum, which not only support, which not only offers support to the LGBTQ students, but raises the awareness of all students. They also teach the value in passing and implementing policies to ensure that LGBTQ plus students can learn and thrive in safe, inclusive, accepting schools. With holiness on our minds, we reflect on recent news in Texas 
Governor Greg Abbott issued a letter to Texas state health agencies announcing that delivering gender-affirming medical treatments to transgender youth is child abuse under state law. The announcement explained that doctors, nurses, and teachers would be legally mandated to report parents who help their child to receive this type of care to family and protective services. Washington Post writers Elizabeth Sharrow and Isaac Cederbaum explain Texas is not alone. More than a dozen state legislatures are considering legislation that would ban access to medical treatments for trans youth. Transgender youth and their families are being targeted when our public officials should be supporting and protecting them. This needs to be stopped. Many individuals have been fighting against this. According to the National Association of Social Workers, over 50 organizations issued a joint statement from mental health and child welfare stakeholders remaining committed to supporting gender-affirming care. It read in part, the undersigned 56 mental health organizations, child welfare organizations, and advocates right to express intense concern about any further action that would, by policy, practice, or statute, define gender-affirming care as child abuse or neglect. Any attempt to characterize gender-affirming care, including medical and mental health treatment, as abuse carries significant potential negative consequences for families, transgender children and adults, mental health and medical professionals, as well as for professionals working in and around the child welfare system. We, too, must join and fight for justice. It is our sacred responsibility to create a world where every individual is treated with dignity, where every individual has the freedom to express that image of God inside of them. When our legislature does not reflect our values, when our legislature discriminates, disrespects, and devalues human beings, we must feel called to speak out. We are not powerless. We must contact elected officials and support LGBTQ plus organizations doing the work on the ground. We must listen to the pain and the danger a bill like this causes. We must stand up against injustice as we create a world fully inclusive of LGBTQ plus individuals. But Selim Elohim, every individual is holy. It's that simple. If God is all powerful, if God is invisible, how does God see God's self? In us, in us. God sees God's self in every human being. God sees God's self in the beauty and diversity of all humanity. May we be inspired to create this world together where every individual is treated as a holy vessel. Now, the reform movement has been advocating for LGBTQ plus rights since 1965 when the women of Reform Judaism called for the decriminalization of homosexuality. The Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism reminds us, each of us created in God's image has a unique talent which can contribute to the high moral purpose of tikkun olam, the repair of our world. Excluding anyone from our community lessens our chance of achieving this goal of a more perfect world. May our Jewish values continue to inspire us to advocate for LGBTQ rights and to work toward repairing this world for all of humanity. We each have a role to play. I hope we can feel that. 
As our story taught us, God sees God's self in us. May we strive to experience holiness in our connections with human beings, experiencing one another's holiness as we work together to repair this world. Shabbat Shalom.